At first glance, this may seem confusing, but it's actually fairly simple. When all three valves are in the on position, your two cylinders essentially become one giant cylinder. Gas flows simultaneously from both cylinders to whatever regulator you are breathing from. In the case of regulator free flow, you would turn off the gas supply to just that first stage. Gas will continue to flow from both cylinders to the remaining first stage. In the case of damage to the manifold or failure of a tank neck o-ring or a burst disc, you would want to shut the isolation valve. By isolating the manifold, you are left with what is essentially two separate cylinders, each with its own on-off valve. The standard procedure now is to continue to breathe from the damaged side of the manifold until it is exhausted, keeping the undamaged side in reserve to complete the ascent. Standard procedure is to begin the dive with all three turn wheels fully turned on. It is also important to ensure that the isolator is in the on position when the tanks are being filled so you don't end up filling only one side. Insofar as the manifold will be behind you, you need to regularly practice reaching back and turning all three valves on and off. In an emergency, this needs to be second nature. Even though manifold components appear to be mirror images of one another, you turn all three valves on by rotating them counterclockwise as viewed from the end of the turn wheel. This makes a left-handed turn wheel susceptible to something called valve roll-off. If the left-hand turn wheel makes frequent contact with the ceiling, it can eventually turn itself off. A gas sharing emergency is an especially poor time to discover that this has happened. To prevent this from becoming a problem, avoid contact with the ceiling. Prevention is always the best solution.